The Happy Warrior Podcast, conservative commentary on the news of the day from a more positive perspective. Hello, everyone. This is Happy Warrior Pete. This here is the Happy Warrior Podcast. For this uh, sort of mini episode, I wanted to do an interview with an amazing YouTuber. Uh, you can find him on YouTube. His name is Yellow Flash, or you type in Yellow Flash 2. Uh, we cover the issue of this guy named Vic Manana. He's an anime voice actor. Uh, I record this episode in a live stream on YouTube for my tiny but hopefully growing YouTube channel, uh, Happy Warrior. That's the name of the YouTube channel. Uh, that's why, so if the audio sounds a little different, that is why. Uh, I included, after the end of the episode, I included the apology video. So if you get to that point, you don't have to listen to it, but you listen to it, and for me personally at least, it changed my whole perspective of the story. And that's kind of why this, this story in particular has stuck with me. So again, Check that out. Be sure always to check us out on the social medias. You guys have been great. Please enjoy this episode and uh, learn about a fantastic guy, the Yellow Flash. The Happy Warrior Podcast. Conservative commentary on the news of the day from a more positive perspective. Okay, I think there we go. I got the theme songs played. <laughs> Welcome, everyone. This is the Happy Warrior Podcast. Uh, I'm streaming this. Uh, I wanted to record it, and I wanted to stream it because Yellow Flash's audience is primarily uh, watches his YouTube videos. So I thought, well, I'll make it a little easier for them, more something more comfortable with. Uh, today, I have with me the talented and amazing Yellow Flash, uh, the YouTube channel, the YouTuber. Is that what they like to call you guys? Yeah, you do that or just Flash. Flash. <laughs> yeah. Yellow Flash. The good Flash, because uh, normal Flash hasn't been good in a couple of years. Uh, no, he's been, it's been a pretty bad show. The comics <laughs> was uh, decent for a minute. It, it was. It was for a hot minute. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I, I'll digress. Uh, today, I brought on Yellow Flash. He kindly was willing to come on my uh, tiny podcast. I'm a tiny fish in a tiny pond. And he, I like, I watched a lot of videos on the subject. Today's subject is about a guy named Vic Manana. Uh, my primary audience, which is mostly, this is a political slash culture podcast. I talk about a lot of nerd stuff. Probably have never heard of the man. Don't really know much about anime, but this story when I first read it and I watched your videos just kept coming back to me, kept coming to my mind and my heart. And it was just like, this just feels so weird. This feels so wrong. And I really feel like it's another attack in the culture war where, where nothing is sacred anymore. Nothing, not, not nowhere in entertainment even is safe from uh, politics and the scourge that has been the me too mob. Uh, oh, and forgive me if I was a little, a little blunt with my language there. Uh, but yeah, I thought your videos, by the way, Yellow Flash number two. Uh, <laughs> I thought your videos, by the way, were the best. And I watched, goodness gracious, I don't even know how many hours of Vic Manana videos. There's been a lot of people coming up, which is is always good too. Like uh, I know, like uh, Hero High has been covering it. He's got pretty good production values. I'm a little. I, I'm just learning how to do all this as I go. I've been doing YouTube for like I think a year now, so. And I've literally learned all of this stuff on the fly. It's been an interesting journey. Oh, no. I I, I think you're doing great. I've enjoyed your videos. I, I learn a lot from them. I, I enjoy your breadth of subjects because uh, you do a lot of stuff throughout Nerds. You don't just stick to comics or anime. I mean, you talked about, uh, you talked about the game Yakuza Zero, whose Japanese game director was fantastic. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I yeah. wanted to use the thumbnail where he's sitting in like a, a throne golden chair and he's got these two Japanese women next to him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he almost and, looks like a Yakuza boss. Oh, yeah. Oh, I, I, I like I like it's nice to hear that politics isn't completely invade the entertainment world on on that side of the ocean. Well, over there, it seems like kind of money talks. I mean, they don't say it directly, but 
if uh, something's not making any money, they'll pull it. I mean, they've pulled uh, – when they were running Dragon Ball Kai over there, it wasn't making any money, so they pulled it. Yep. It, oh, yeah. it didn't finish until the American market had a demand for it. And then when they saw they could make money over here, they finished it. Yeah. No, that, I mean, I'll get – not to digress, but that's kind of surprising because Dragon Ball, as big as it is in the U.S., it's even bigger in Japan. Yeah, they but they had a long run. I mean, because it came out here more recently. I mean, it, I think it just – like when they brought it over here, I think Dragon Ball GT had just ended and we were just getting it. So we got it like right at the tail end. Oh, yeah. So it's a little bit more fresh here comparatively to that, them. Yeah, that is true. That is true because what? When Dragon Ball Z was first on the air on Toonami, that was like 98 or 99. I mean the series yeah, was a long time like ago. Almost 10 years. Yeah. All right. Well, sorry for all that. So if you cannot tell, um, me personally, I am a bit of a Japanophile. I've off and on have had a love-hate relationship with anime. In high school, I even started an anime uh, high school club. Uh, and so off and on throughout my uh, adult life, I've, I've, uh, come, I've come to anime and I've kind of moved away. And then I came back and I moved away. Uh, and you seem to be very similar, right, Yellow Flash, that you seem to enjoy anime. You said you don't like dubs. You tend to like uh, uh, subs. Like you, you lo- you're with yeah. – yeah, I think I heard on one of your videos you're into Crunchyroll right now, which is uh, – Yeah, Crunchyroll is okay. They uh... – they're they doing a lot of dumb stuff like with this High Guardian Spice or whatever that show is. It looks like a Harry Potter ripoff. Somebody called it compared it to something else, and I can't remember. But um, the only dub that I ever really liked, ironically, was Full Metal Alchemist. And I like My Hero Academia a little bit better dub because they seem more Western themed. Both of them do, mm-hmm. and I think that the dubs actually fit it better. Yeah, but, no, I agree completely. I think that for Full Metal Alchemist, I always felt that the the dubbing on that is so strong that it did elevate it you know sometimes dubs can dubbing is uh when they put uh english to you know uh, a japanese show or a, whatever kind of show it is and in anime we've heard to dub when they have you know english voices versus sub which is just the japanese language track with subtitles underneath um yeah yeah i i, I agree full metal alchemist if you want to try to get into anime Full Metal Alchemist is a pretty good start. My brothers, who are not really that much into anime, I mean, they watched Toonami on Cartoon Network back when we were kids, but, I mean, that's about it. They love Full Metal Alchemist. I mean, Full Metal Alchemist is a very popular show, and for good reason. It is, it's is—it's extremely well, well, well done, well thought out piece of artwork. Yeah, it's amazing. Both shows are, actually. Yeah. Okay, so... It's Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Okay, so... Did you know before this who in the world Mick Manana is before all this controversy came out, Yellow Flash? I didn't really know who he was other than the Full Metal Alchemist show. I just stumbled on all this when I saw that he was getting – because I was looking up Dragon Ball Super Broly news. And I saw the stuff that was going on. I was like, this is crazy. And uh, it was my first one where he got hit with the Me Too and I went over it and talked about it. And then uh, I looked into it more. And, you know, I find out all this stuff that they're doing and it's almost like a whole like a whole like collusion conspiracy at this point. And, and that's even coming from uh, another YouTuber who's at a lawyer. Uh, Nick Ricada was talking about that on the stream mm-hmm. I was on uh, the other night. Yeah, you did a, a panel. I haven't watched the panel yet. I was about to get to it. Sorry. Uh, uh, what was it? Where was it going? Yeah. So uh, Vic Manana. And I didn't – I just recognized the voice. If I heard his voice on in an anime or cartoon, I recognized his voice. But other than that, I was like, I have no idea. I, how do you pronounce that? Is it – how do you – I, I had to really research. It's, it's manana, kind of like uh, lasagna. That's what – Yeah, told I think man, manana. Man, manana. I, I, I change it every video. <laughs> so <laughs> I know. I, I, was, I was having a heck of a time trying to spe- – I still have to look at your – like I – for this, I was like, okay, how do you spell this again? Yeah, 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 yeah. Vic Manana. He, okay, so Vic Manana is a, is a voice actor, fairly popular voice actor, uh, apparently. Um, he's seen a lot of the anime convention scene. His career has been pretty successful. He's been doing anime dubbing for two decades now. Uh, recently, he was in a uh, in the anime world, relatively a huge movie. Uh, uh, what is it? Dragon Ball? Is it just Dragon Ball Super Brawly or something like that? 
Yep, that's the titles. it. Yeah, and it was a big success. And then we found out just about, uh, I'm going to say two weeks ago, that Vic Magnana is a predator. Da, da, da. Or at least that's what we were told. Uh, it, now, now, how did it go from there? Because that was that was initially, as I read, and I think I read on IGN, says Vic Magnana is a terrible predator and he's been kicked off this and that and he's awful and then it went to anime's news network and let's go let's go to there because your research you've done you know this subject uh front to back by now so i'll let you uh lead on this what what was going on with anime news network's uh claims well there was some new stuff that just came out the name's coming off of me but um sorry my puppy (laughs) my puppy's crying over there just got those just got her like two weeks ago but um yeah she's, she's a handful but um it started out so there's it seems the one thing I can say for sure because I haven't fully looked into it yet is that Mars girl, that girl from Channel Awesome, tweeted out on the day of the movie right when it came out. She's like, you know, oh, it's unfortunate that Funimation is hiring Vic Manana. I don't know what we should call this. Maybe hashtag Kick Vic or something. And then her Twitter exploded from that. And she's literally on every single tweet. Anime News Network's picking it up. They actually fabricated some of the p- uh, pictures with him and a girl, blurred her face out. And yeah. they, uh, the girl that's in the picture is like, What's, what is this? You know? And yeah, she's they, like, they still have it. the pictures there, but they just blurred it out. Even they though the retract. girl wrote to them says, That's not what that is at all. <laughs> they just ignore it. Oh, yeah. They're completely unethical. So, yeah, so the Anime News Network thing comes out. And at first, you're like, is this, le- this kind of looks legit, right? They're like, he's groping. On- so, Vic Mignogna goes to these anime conventions. Here's what they're all He goes to these anime convention scenes. He goes to underage girls. 14 seems to be the prime number because that's the age of most of the girls in the article. And he'll just yeah. hug them, but he'll put his hands like under their skirt or put his hands like, like in the weird hug, somehow he'd be putting under their, um, uh, their, uh, top mandibles. And, uh, even with, like, it's weird because, like, the parents are often, if these are underage kids or they're other kids, whatever. It's in public. Supposedly he's doing this. And he needs to be getting rid of. Uh, what was, in fact, that, what's the headline? Fans recount unwanted affection. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But most of these uh, allegations that come from people are like, you know, uh, I heard from a buddy that knew this person that talked to this other guy. Like, it's all, like witnesses of somebody else's supposed story is like at least 90% of all of these allegations. And then a lot of the times when you hear it from someone that's directly saying it about them, it's like from 10 years ago and upon reflection, you know, yes. upon reflection with all of the stuff going on right now. So it's just like, it's just, it's just all kind of fishy, you know, it's it is- just doesn't add up just right to me and that's uh why i started to get into it and look into it because i'm I don't, i'm sick of twitter court i agree i 100 percent agree that's why i think this story i think it's, it's annoying to me this story hasn't broken out of uh the anime community so to speak you know it's not not in the greater world because this is such a great example of the same stuff we've been see, seeing in the u.s and the Western world in our journalism is every month we have a new boogeyman that we all have to chase after. And sometimes sometimes it's more accurate and sometimes it's just like 30-year-old allegations. Uh, yeah. it, it, no one can source it anymore. I mean, it's not, not even the allegations are often – this won't – you won't be able to put someone into a civil suit, let alone indict them for a crime. And Am I getting it right? That's kind of what they're saying with Vic Mon. Yeah. Do you? Because th- from what I can tell, they haven't come out with anything strong enough to uh, to actually, you know, have a policeman come over and uh, pull him against the wall. I don't think they want that because then it would clear his name. I think I'm pretty confident by now, some kind of picture or something like concrete would have came out, and there's nothing for all of these years. There's no pictures of him with his hand up some girl's skirt, which I find hard to believe in modern age with cell phones in everyone's pocket. That doesn't make any sense to me. And those places are packed. But you hear, there was a story saying that he made out with a 14-year-old girl at his booth all in the open. <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure that really happened. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> yes. 
that it's why not? Why not? I mean, the internet says so. So of course it's true. Twitter's but a factual place. It's all only facts. Only the highest level of evidence is allowed on Twitter. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So, so yeah. So and people that come out. So f- he he worked at Funimation. And if you don't know this, but in the ant in the you, actually pretty much the whole. If you want anime in English. You're going to Funimation these days. And Funimation has just... They said they did an internal investigation that took like five minutes of their time. Kicked him out. All his co-workers who... Am I getting this right? It was like five minutes before they're taking uh, uh, PR pictures with him. All smiles and hugs. Yep. And, and There's now, even videos of them hugging him. Like Christopher, Christopher Sabat, the voice of Ajita, like at a convention, him giving a big hug to him. The, what I'm hearing about that investigation, there was a... YouTuber that went through the whole like their whole process, did their manual on how they do that, and it sounds like it was kind of rushed. But either way, from what I'm hearing for some people that have spoken in my ear, is that a lot of the voice actors and like a script writer and such, they were like putting pressure on Funimation, get rid of this guy or we'll walk. Wow. I, I, to be fair, I can't say that. I I can't. You know. Uh, yeah, I got it. I no no no, and I wouldn't be surprised at all. I mean, but if you're a Funimation, being at that point, what do you do? I mean, for most companies, it's. I mean, this is just the, my understanding. In the United States, most companies just they are scared to death of any negative publicity. <laughs> we just don't want to have to deal with it. We just want to get this over with. So yeah, we'll push them out. We, we're not going to take any chances. That's uh, leading to a lot of backlash. I think that it would have been more profitable for them to stand with him. I think. I think in the long run, you're right. So here's some of the so some of the people that have led this attack, like the editor of Anime News Network that was starting to go after um, some of the YouTubers, Mike Tool, uh, Clownfish TV did research on him and used to uh, uh, write reviews for uh, anime porn, which is called hentai. Um, <laughs> I, <laughs> <laughs> Poor Clownfish TV. They're such nice people. Every time I've watched their videos, they they're just the, like the nicest, nice folks that you would see out here in the Midwest. You know, they bring, yeah, they're very nice. They bring a casserole when you're nice. sick or something. Yeah, really nice people, man. I th- they're calling them and that him and uh, Lost Paws, this other YouTuber. They're calling them both like like look at these Nazis at Team YouTube. I'm like what? And, you know, they, they doubled down on that. Another guy, I forget his name, that works there came out and was like, SJW was invented by white nationalists. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. If, you, if It's all the alt-right. Those are the only people that have a problem with this story whatsoever. J- just so you know, the alt-right. Uh, I, well, maybe. I mean, it's possible that there are some alt-writers, out-and-out alt-writers, because, you know, 4chan they, is considered to be the headquarters of the alt-right. At least this is what I'm told. Uh, so, I mean, you might have some in there. But, I mean, the fan backlash has been pretty dang significant. I mean, some of the people that have been pushing is people I used to have a lot of respect for. And I feel really torn right now. As an anime fan that often like dubs, I'm kind of like, I want to, you know, I do kind of want to watch some anime right now. But, man, these people are just being so harsh and unrelenting. I mean, Monica Real plays the voice of Bulma. I mean, uh, she's she's been very harsh and she's been threatening to take people to is it sit she said something like <laughs> i'll send this to my lawyer or something like that i screenshotted your tweet and i'm sending it to law enforcement yeah goodness gracious <laughs> uh, uh yeah she, she doesn't get like that's not how it works if you're a public figure no you're, no uh, especially you're open if, to all of that especially if the tweets are from her own page and they're her pr i mean her her photog like it just took us like five seconds to get this whatever yeah uh, Jamie Marchie, um, now this, uh, Jamie Marchie is not Mars Girl. That's someone else. Jamie Marchie is the voice actor. Do I have that right? I'm terrible with names. I am just. She is a voice actor, but I think she has more power now. I think she's uh, in production as well. She's one of the people that's also, and she's her. I you, I, I watched her video and you say, look at her tweet. I did. It's like, wow, that's because she was saying that he, when someone asked her, okay, you've knocked him out. He's out of a job. What more do you want? She's like, I want it. You know, I want, I want his head. I want his, um, <clears throat> uh, forgive me, uh, balls. I want to, you know, just like make him suffer all the pain that I have suffered. Uh, yeah, just, she's she's quite a person. Yeah, and, and uh, I don't know if it was you. 
or someone else. But she actually has a history, I guess, with um, see the, the politics and uh, the anime world. She did. Yep. What, what what's her background on that? Well, she's changed lines in the dub too, from what I've seen. I, so I, I don't watch a lot of dubs, so I'm not too sure. I just know what other people have reported, and there's two anime. One where she changed a line and actually had the character mention Gamergate, which was nowhere in the original when you watch it and compare <laughs> it to the dub. Yeah. The, 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 and another line where she has the character walk in and the girl's like talking about she's dressing this certain way to uh, let get the patriarchy off her back. Oh, my gosh. And I think – um I think in the subtitle version, it was like she just looks, oh, this just makes me look a little bit more busty or something. It was completely different than the original version. Yeah, well, I I, it, it, I mean, it's interesting. So the people that have been leading the fight to go after uh, Mr. Mignogna either seem to be to me, and maybe you can tell me if I'm wrong. They're either ambulance chasers, like, you know, if I can take Vic down, this will somehow help my career and this will help, you know, my my following. Or they're people that really should be should be last in line to be attacking people for sexual allegations. Uh, Neil Kaplan, I guess, is one of these examples. Yep. I, 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 he, I guess he's a voice actor. I don't know that much about him. But are, what my, what is it? Is he, isn't he being like alleged to have uh, have his own? me too moment or something like that from what i saw it was uh he was trying to get a girl to come up to his room just from the one uh the one report i was reading from one angry gamer he was trying to get a girl to come up to his room i haven't looked too much into it because there's uh, a couple other people that have been digging into him pretty hard yeah well i mean uh, you know if <laughs> Ye who lives by the sword. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I mean, if you're gonna, if you can, if you're gonna dish it out, you have to be able to take it, right? Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Okay, so it seems like, and it's really frustrating to me because I have a background in journalism. It does this terrible thing that I see on Twitter all the time: is that all the news self-report to each other, and it's like this chain that links back. It's like an Ouroboros, you know, where it eats its own tail. So. IGN will point to Anime Gate. Anime Gate will point to some other website, which will point to IGN. Which then you get, then you have your complete circle, which IGN points to Anime Gate. This is, it go, goes around and around, and all most of them say they just say it like it's a fact. They just say he, that he's done this stuff. They say that he's uh, attacked under underage girls and uh, whatnot. It's very and it's very frustrating. It looks like the narrative, sad to say, has completely got been been taken over except for by loyal fans and it seems just people who just want to enjoy anime and not be bothered by by politics or pandering or all that stuff you know the sub people don't have to deal with it (laughs) you know because they don't see it but the dub people they've had it bad for a long time i've noticed it back when dragon ball z came out here because every single line was completely changed they like think that script was only like maybe 20 percent 10% 10% even if you have had any of the old like those orange boxes or whatever the, the you know the really cheap season sets for that show watch yeah. it dubbed and turn the subtitles on and you'll see just how different that is oh I you know that that is tempting on uh, my aunt uh, I was too young to have any uh, cash to buy uh, anime videos but she would uh, and I have to go ask her that I have seen that in other anime though where yeah where you watch it and the dubs the the subtitles are completely different sometimes I guess it makes sense like particularly if it's like uh, a comedy and the humor is very Japanese culture cent- cultural centric I kind of understand that but other times yeah that I get yeah but other times it's it's I don't I don't know why they choose it so it's, it's what has been you, what you've covered and what you talked to other people, what has been the fan pushback? Because the fans haven't just caved. They haven't just the, just joined the uh, the rising tide on this. No, there's a lot of pushback. There's a, the hashtag, uh, I stand with Vic. Every time, because I use it, I've been used, I use it for my videos when I post them on Twitter. And there's always like, you know, sometimes 200 tweets an hour up to 50 tweets an hour. It's pretty active. It's just about as active as the Kick Vic one too, which is pretty uh, pretty interesting. Yeah, the Kick Vic one is, I mean, it's a mixture of people. I think it's just we're using this because everyone's talking about it. I don't think, 
Because I would say at least half of it are people that's somewhat supportive of Vic. At least a third to half of it on the Kick Vic uh, thread. I, it, well, there's a, there's a lot of people that are coming in to uh, just support him because of what you know their stance on this stuff. Yeah, that's kind. That's more like me, where I I'm just getting frustrated because I don't I do not want to. I don't. You don't tend to talk about politics. I like this about you, and uh, I don't know what I'll call you guys. The comics gate youtubers okay you guys sometimes refer to that politics going on but you don't really talk about and you're like we're not trying to divide people unlike the mainstream media these days we really don't want to divide our audience in half so i don't want to get into it but i mean it, it seems like what we've seen with the like brett kavanaugh last year in the supreme court or what we saw with the covington kids just a month ago it seems like this out of control mob-like behavior and so someone to me that's like guys we have to have rule of law we have to have some rules to live by okay this is twitter court as you call it. it just won't work um and i think this has proven this out i you know i, I this is my guess i'm going to ask you this and you you mentioned this in one of your videos you t- said that uh you think that one of the reasons why he pe- they wanted to take him out was because he's outspoken He's religious. He's an outspoken religious person, and maybe even his political views. And this is yeah, I'm not sure if he's if I, I don't know. Somebody said he is conservative. I can't confirm that, but uh, he is. A, he's a he's a you know elephant in the room, white dude, fairly good looking. He's like 56. You know, he looks pretty good for 56. I know. It, apparently, t- he <laughs> he has uh, got a wish from a magical genie and no longer ages. <laughs> yeah. And he and he's very religious, and you know we've seen we've seen all of those people get trashed in the media. It's for a reason. These aren't new tactics. These are tactics that have been going on throughout the history of uh, civilization. I, I like to compare it to, and I don't think a lot of people even know this, but back in the day, like England, when they were going with the Irish, you know, Irish people and English people look really the same. So you have to find a new way to demonize them, and they did exactly that by making them like propaganda pictures where they drew them like monkeys and they had booze all over the place and they uh it's the way to dehumanize them and turn them into like a subhuman that way you don't feel so bad when you hit them over the head with that pipe wrench yep yep and well uh, they may be starving over there but really it's their fault (laughs) it's because they're just so dang inept those irish uh only eating one crop at a time um yeah, I know. I hear it. This, it. It does look like other. I did the research. I found this article for 2016 where he comes out and he says he says uh, he has a Christian upbringing. He he says that he was raised. He's on the conservative end of the spectrum. Um, see, the guy asks him in this interview. He says, "Do you still consider yourself conservative?" He says, "I do." But, quote, I would, I do, but I also have really over the years succumbed to temper some of my very dogmatic beliefs, fictions. I came to feel they were counterproductive to reaching people for Christ. And there's a video, I don't know if you've seen it, Yellow Flash, where... Is that where he the Evangelion people? Or the Evangelion, the Evan... Uh, there's some video, <laughs> and I, I could not find it after I watched it last night. Where, Evangelicals, right? I think that's... Yes! Yes, I'm that's saying the, the anime name. He's like <laughs> in some him. parking lot somewhere in like Mont, like in uh, some you know like Montezula or Gary and some some convention in the middle of nowhere, and he's, he's they have these evangelicals and they're just just going at him and on and he's like we got to be good Christians. We know we, we Jesus didn't teach people by castigating them all the time. You know we have to show them what a good Christian is like, and it's it's a long video. It's like twenty minutes at least. It gets old fast, but I mean, he, he seems like a really good human being. Uh, it sent me on this Twitter hole, and you and you point some of these out. Vic like likes to visit fans that have cancer in the hospital, and he doesn't like he doesn't do it like uh, Monica Real would. Where look, I'm in the hospital with sick cancer kids. Look at me. It's I just do it, and it's the people themselves that post it. I the video I think was from 2012, or another one. Uh, this lady gal, when I was checking out the kick fix, she says, hey, look at this. Uh, this Vic sent me this nice message about me getting my associate's degree from college. And I could not tell if that was current, like if he had just sent that out or if it was older. She didn't say. But, I mean, he seems to be like someone that actually does try, when at least when it comes to fans, tries to live by his religious beliefs, which, I mean, that's pretty rare these days. Yeah, it seems that way. It seems like he generally just loves his fan, and I think uh, 
a lot of the hugging and stuff, I think that that just comes from his genuine affection from him, for like for how he feels about it. I think he's very grateful to have them, which, you know, in today's society, a lot of these people feel so entitled. It's like, you know, it seems like the other way around where they feel like you should be lucky to have them, you know. Are you good enough to be my fan? And it's yeah, even right. the same way with, with companies. Are you worthy of my products now? Sell it with like Gillette. Oh yeah. Are you not are you are you not to, are you you need to be less toxic to buy these raises? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's why I I you know, before I before every morning before I shave, I make sure that I uh um, making sure I'm not enforcing toxic masculinity or helping the uh, white heteronormative patriarchy. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, I I I don't know. I get it's so frustrating. So I watched. You've seen the apology video. That thing is heartbreaking. And I'll include some of the the audio at the end of this video when I put it on my podcast. That is heartbreaking, man. That made me cry the first time. And I and I, I, I am a tad of emotional person, but I was like, man, this guy has been really screwed over and he really feels it looks he feels like someone that got stabbed in the back. Like like I had no idea the people all around me, they said they were my friends. They said they cared about me. They said they're so they said, Vic, oh you helped me with my career, Vic. I love you, Vic. And <laughs> I mean, now they're just saying, oh, I've known for 15 years how awful he was. Yeah, look at all the stuff that came up before. I mean, just before all this happened, like, you know, they're at, at a Dragon Ball pre-show or something. And it was uh, Monaco Royale and uh, I think Sonny Strait. I can't remember who else was in the picture with him, but it was Vic and Monica. I want to say Sonny Strait and somebody else. And they're all like, you know, giving the thumbs up and having a good time. Even that Jamie... Uh, Marchy girl, there's a video that somebody just posted. She's like on a panel feeling his muscles. It's like, you know, I believe it. I bet he didn't see this coming at all. And it's just like, it just hit him out of nowhere. And it, it was obviously planned to all drop the day that movie came out to ride the waves of its popularity. I, I just look, it's possible that, you know, he went as far as Neil Kaplan asked a girl if, you know, they wanted to, do the horizontal mama. I'm not saying that isn't possible, but I'm saying there's nothing here that's even worthy of a civil suit. In fact, I would be surprised if and if uh, uh, Mr. Mignogna doesn't make out in a sweet payday against Funimation uh, in a couple of years from all this. Yeah, I hope he does. I hope he sues a lot of these people. Oh, I hope so. All the, I, all the people connected to kicking this off definitely should be somewhat liable because it's all there. And we've got all of this documented. So if he ever wants it, we're – we told him through some uh, people that were more than willing to get it to him. Oh, I mean, his mom runs his fan store for crying out loud. I, I just yeah. don't. He has a Christian music CD. He does for free fan convention. This is how my, my dad was like. I mentioned this on Twitter. My dad's like, that's the guy from the fan Star Trek convention. I was like, what? How do you know about Vic Magnana? But yeah, he does these free Star Trek conventions where he does, uh, I guess it's supposed to be a pretty good uh, Captain James Tiberius Kirk. He will also he also does this stuff with other full male alchemist uh, actors where they'll do these fan, uh, kind of like an audio play. I mean, this guy, I don't know. He just seems like a class act. I, that's what I come away with this. Every time I look at this, he just seems like a classy guy. And I don't, it's possible that maybe he wasn't always the best. We all have our bad days. And it is possible that maybe some of this is true, but there's no proof. And when when you said, when you asked for it, I mean, you've been, people have been threatening to dox you, right? Uh, the, oh, yeah. People have been coming after me like crazy. Yeah. The one girl tried to flag my channel and, and all that stuff. But I mean, this is nothing I'm not used to. I've been doing this for like a year now. And uh, it's just another set of, crappy people really it is you know i am i don't know about you but i am just tired i'll get to okay i'll talk about i want to talk about your challenges but i just want to say i am so tired of there's a reason why there's a thing called comics gate and gamer gate now anime gate is politics seems to be being injected uh in, in all the all the uh evangelism political evangelism from people on the left mostly it's been injected in just everything these days you cannot go anywhere do you can't even buy a razor with <laughs> i mean without <laughs> without hearing about ugh, here are the top 10 reasons white heteronormative patriarchy is bad and here's how you can help stop it uh, i'm just tired of it i'm tired of it 
just le- like like the anime people I know are they tend to maybe this is true the people that you know that you like anime they tend to be in socially inverted quiet shy you know i know when we go to these anime conventions you know these, these conventions by the way for those who have never been to anime convention the people there it's a very weird environment because there's people girls running around in body paint there's some lewd cosplayers everyone's hugging and, and kissing each other a bit too much for my midwestern uh <laughs> body space standards <laughs> Uh, I, I, I have you done much in the convention scene or attended many cons over the years, Yellow Flash? Uh, just a couple, not really my thing. Yeah. If anything, I like to go and uh, look at all the merchandise and maybe buy some stuff. You know, I don't see that much, and then I don't, I don't, I go, I, I don't go to any panels or anything. Oh, okay, okay. Buy maybe buy like a metal, a metal sign fan art of something. Yeah, that's <laughs> pretty much autograph or something, and and then I bounce out. I, the only reason I ever went even like the Comic Cons is to go and look for like uh, you know some good issues, see if I can wheel and deal some prices down, and then uh, I leave. That's pretty much all I go for. Oh yeah, you're you're good. I'm awful at wheeling and dealing. I I'm a sucker. I'm I'm one of those suckers born every five minutes. I'm terrible at it. Uh, <laughs> okay, so I want to talk about now Yellow Flash and his fantastic YouTube channel. Uh, I let's talk about you. So you said you've been doing this a year, for a year. Yep. So what made you interested in starting to uh, put out YouTube uh, videos and cover the subjects you do? I always wanted to get in on this culture war a little bit because I'm just was sick of it. And, uh, you know, YouTube, I was always like, you got to be, I don't know how to do all this stuff, editing and all that. And uh, I got really into watching uh, Diversity in Comics. You, you know who that is? Yes. He, he changed his channel, though. Now he's with your boy, Zach, or something like <laughs> Yeah, that. the Comics Matter with your boy, Zach. <laughs> he should have kept it. But I understand. I've talked to him a little bit since uh, he left Twitter. Every now and then I, we, we chat. And uh, I think he just wants to – he's tired of it all, the drama. And I think he just wants to talk comics now and kind of relax, which, you know, I'm, I get because it gets draining doing this. It really does. Yeah, and you're way into comics. I, I that that's one of your your niche subjects. Do I understand that you're big into the to reading comics and comics in general? Yeah, but I've done a lot of switching over to manga, and uh, because the comics are just they're getting so bad now. Oh. It's like it was only last year. Like Superman was so good. Like you know, and he had a family, and it was really interesting to see that dynamic on the character, and it was really popular and loved and. You know, now that's changed. They pretty much aged his son from 11 to like 17 years old. And uh, he's, he's probably going to get killed. They have like Lois and Clark living apart now. Um, it's like, what is this? You know, you took it from this like good family values that people were generally liking. It was selling good. And, you don't, know, you don't changed. tell me that the devil tricked another superhero into trading their no. marriage. Though I, I like to think of <laughs> Brian Michael Bendis as the devil after this. Oh my gosh! Yeah, the Marvel in particular; those comics are so bad. I, I oh, am sad. Terrible. DC's not far now. They're they're right I on know. the way. DC used to be the the bastion because I can remember. I got into comics. Uh, I tried to. I like spent like a year, a summer, trying really hard to get into comics, and mostly I read DC. That was probably what twenty fifteen. Yeah, it's a cool it's a cool format, but. It is a it's it's a very technical you know it's a format that you have to know really well. Not just anyone can go out there and write a script for a good comic. It seems. I think that's what I got from your videos and from Zach's. Uh, yeah. Is that look? This isn't just any old piece of media. This is an art form, and you need pros that know what they're doing when they write these and do the artwork. And that is being that is being traded off for uh, political evangelism. Yep. You're right. Well, there's a whole craft to it. Like, uh, you know, I, I'm not an expert writer in comics, but I picked up from, you know, reading and watching people that seem to know what they're doing. And, you know, there's certain things to it. Like maybe this reveal should come during this page turn or, you know, I'm going to have this much room and then this should be a splash page. And, you know, these people I like to call them like comic pro hobos because they have like they have no idea what they're doing. It's like they're just drifting in here for no reason. You know, other than to just kind of get some relevance or maybe get some kind of movie script, TV show script. It seems like that's the whole reason. And they're also cheaper because they have no talent. They have no experience. 
So Marvel's playing these people with peanuts and they're making the books for peanuts and you know, they it's a short term gain, but a long term like a long term loss because I think it's pretty it's pretty clear that the I don't think the comic industry can last. I think it's a lost a lost battle at this point with as far as trying to save the big two as they are. I think the indie comics for American comics is gonna be where the future is, unfortunately. Yeah, that's that's good and bad. That is sad. That is sad. Uh comic book shops not doing so great these days. We no, should- they're not. They're closing all the time. Yeah, we we are lucky here at my hometown that we still have one that's that's for what I can tell is done okay. It's still holding on, but I don't know how how much longer that can that can go on. I should point out though that this comic shop mostly sells older stuff. Like the, a lot of them are doing that. Yeah, yeah. It seems like very few of any current comics are being sold. I thought uh, in particular uh, that issue that did they have one just recently on Apocalypse. Where, <laughs> where uh, Dark Side was uh, having a Me Too moment with, uh, yeah. <laughs> whatever her name, is, Granny Goodness. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah, only a hardcore feminist would look at <laughs> Granny Goodness and think this is somebody that you can sympathize with. Yeah, Dark Side, get in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> Granny Goodness is a terrible person, oh, but yeah. you know she's a victim. Oh man, Jack, now was it Jack Kirby that wrote the uh, the apocalypse stuff in the New Gods? Do I have that right, or do I have the wrong name? Uh, I think it's him because yeah. I know a lot of people say Jack Kirby's rolling in his grave right yeah, now. Seriously, man, it's like what? <laughs> I was trying to create a new way of telling mythology. Yeah, he did the New God stuff. Yep. Oh, look what it look what's happened. That's just terrible. So that so Comics Gate. So people kind of know Gamergate has a really bad reputation. Comic Skate doesn't exactly have that same reputation. Comic Skate, though, is it, it, very understandable. Comic Skate, for those who don't know, was it is, it's this politic, politics being injected into comics, and you can't get away from it. And then when someone does, because there was, you, so you know, uh, Zach, as he now likes to be called, did he? He came out with an independent comic, and when he did that, like he had like. Uh, what what is it? Was it Bendis, Michael Bendis, or whatever his name? They were trying to close his work down. Not Brian Michael. He actually, as much as I don't like his writing or what he's done to the books, um, it's fairly quiet and doesn't really attack anybody. Now I don't know what he's doing behind the scenes, if even that. But the the main people are a lot of these uh, you know low level people and Mark Wade, who seems to be a a big person in this. That's the guy there he's suing. Yeah. I'm so yeah. bad with names, man. So if I, Mark uh, Wade called his publisher and was like, you know who this guy is. And from what it sounds like, you know, I don't really know the law too well, but it's tortoise interference. And, uh, he, uh, if I'm saying that right anyway, but he called the publisher and was like, you know, just got look at this guy's Nazi. And, uh, you know, this, it's not going to be good for you. If you publish this book, Basically, <laughs> and uh, the dumbass goes and gives interviews and confirms it all over media, and you know he's he's probably going to lose that case. It's crazy. Well, the but good news him. is the good news is unlike other things, Comic Gate turned out has a as a at least a positive side story is that that comic uh, what's it called now? It's a candy Jawbreakers. <laughs> <laughs> Jawbreakers is very, very successful. It's so much that I think I, the, Zach was saying I'm, it's almost like torture because he had like to put like fifty five hundred signatures or something. Yeah, he was there for like three days signing books. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what do you? I'm sure, think, that wasn't fun. So, uh, with your expertise and your knowledge now, being a top Vic Manana expert. Expert, you can now go on a, a like Discovery Channel History Channel, and be one of those people they interview to tell the the story. Uh, what do you think is going to happen to Vic, and what do you think? Is, are we going to see more stuff like Anime Gate? Is this going to get better in the in the future? I mean, what do you think the future and and for Vic and nerddom in general is going to be? I think uh, Vic. I don't know, man. I don't know how he comes back from this. I mean, I, I, my hope for him is that he sues and is able to get a nice lump sum of money. And then I'm sure, you know, he can do, you know, other th- I don't think he's going to work in the voice acting industry, at least for a while. Right. I, I don't know. These people never forgive and they never forget. I hope he can. I would like to help clear his name, you know, if that's possible. That's like the whole goal, you know, 
but you know we'll see and as as far as uh the entertainment i think our if you want to have a good story that's not full of politics and people can do what they want it seems like you know that's going to come from the independent market for as far as comics or games the indie games are doing a lot of that now and uh as far as like a comic japan they're kind of like the last line of defense at this point <laughs> you know because you have shows and manga coming out like my Sh- uh rising of the shield hero i don't know if you know about that yep. whole yeah. thing yeah where you know something like that comes out and they can ignore the mob now if that show came out here Oh, that way no. wouldn't even get aired oh, because no, 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 no. <laughs> if you remember on HBO, I think it was HBO. They were going to do a show where they were going to show if the South had won the Civil War. Yeah, it was going to be by canceled. the Game of Thrones guys, if I remember yep. correctly. It sounded like an interesting show, but it got canceled. Even with like, you know, history, Battlefield Five taking uh, the swastikas and stuff. This is going <laughs> to people are going to probably grab this up, make it sound bad. But they're like taking uh you know, history out of the games, out of a history game. Like, yeah, that, that I, was, I don't see the point of that. A very, this is a very weird, broken uh, Fortnite World War II game. Yeah, it's terrible. I agree. My my personal sadness, the one that's hurt me the deepest is Doctor Who, because I'm like, that's like my go-to. I used to be into Star Wars, but then Disney bought, so I moved on to Doctor Who. Now even Doctor Who has crashed. Another, <laughs> yeah. another has <laughs> fallen beneath the blade of social justice. It's the wokest of the Doctor Who's. I wouldn't even honestly care if it's a woman, but it's the storylines that are crap. Like, the story's garbage. Oh, no. They, like, they she's, don't. like, on the bus with, uh, you know, Rosa Parks. What is this? Oh, <laughs> Why yeah, isn't she no. fighting space yeah. aliens or something? Oh, <laughs> you know what it I'm was, saying? It was fantastic. It was. I. They were actually, the biggest problem with that was they were just so goodness gracious boring. Oh, my gosh. I mean, that was like watching C-SPAN. It was, it was so dull. <laughs> oh. It's going to get duller. Well, Even Star Trek's lost. Oh, I know. I know. I know it's sad. I Yeah, I think, well, you know, Vic Magnana, there, I went to his website, and you can read. He has a recording of the Book of John. I think he needs to go back, finish the New Testament, then he can go to the Old Testament. And maybe he could get, because I, I think the Christian community would probably let him let him do his thing but it's sad he won't be able to do what we all loved him for which was voice acting hopefully i'm wrong you know i didn't i would hope so but i just i've seen how these people roll for for a while now and they are uh they are nasty unless you can get them out of the industry but you know they're so they're so cemented in all of these companies now it's almost like the entertainment industry needs to collapse to get them all out yeah they, i think you're right. The, the indie stuff, that's that's kind of where it is now. You know, games, get all these people, you can do it yourself. If you're talented enough to program a game and make one, you can do it. And people, is if you do something good, I mean, these people make money. Yeah. You know, the internet, word of mouth, it will advertise itself for you. Yeah, that is why the internet is a beautiful thing. Well, thank you so much, Yo Flash. I am, it was this is the highlight of my week. This is what I've been looking forward to since you allowed me to have an interview with you. You are awesome. I enjoy your videos. Please, if you have not checked it out, look up Yellow Flash Two on YouTube. Watch them frequently and often. Be sure to subscribe. Uh, you're also prolific on Twitter, um, and hopefully, we'll get to talk again another time. You're excellent. You and your puppy have a great weekend. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Okay. Okay, so I am going to uh, share with you some audio. It's from a video apology that uh, Mr. Vic Magnana gave at a uh, convention just after these allegations came up. Uh, The channel that posted is called Super Rage 128. Uh, The convention was called Bach Anime. It's really an incredible piece of audio. Listen to as much of it as you want, but I thought I'd share it here with my episode so you can kind of... I don't know. It just gave me a certain feeling when I re- when I heard him speak about it. And it, again, I like to end here. Thank you again to Yellow Flash too for uh, the wonderful interview. It was very kind of him to do that. I enjoyed it, and I hope he enjoyed it too. How can I do better? And I learned something, and I wanted to share it with you. As long as I've been doing events, which is a long time, 
I've always been very demonstrative. Hug everybody. You know what I mean? I've all that's just, that's just always been who I am. You could go back and find panels from ten or Q and A or autograph sessions from ten years ago, 12, 15 years ago, and I'm doing the same thing. I, I, that in my mind, it's it's a way of saying thank you and expressing kindness and and appreciation and warmth and support for a lot of people that could use it. You know what I'm talking about when I say that. But here's what I've learned. We're here for you, man. You are. Just because a thousand people want a hug doesn't mean everybody does. And I got really lazy. Over the years, I got really lazy. And I got used to being the same person all the time. And I was insensitive to the fact that there could be people out there that don't want that. And it has never, ever been my intention to offend or hurt anyone. Welcome. It has never been my intention or desire to offend anyone. And I would like to think that the tens of thousands of people that I've met over the years know that. But there are there are people that don't that don't they don't want that kind of interaction. And I have not been sensitive to them. I see that um, as I've been reflecting on what's been going on. And here's the thing, guys: voice actors are no different than you are. We're bozos. I mean, honestly, we're just dumb humans trying to do our best. You know what I mean? We're just trying to get along in the world. We, and, and we stumble and we fall, right? How many of you know that you do that, right? How many of you would pray to God that somebody didn't follow you around every minute of the day with a camera and, and log every dumb thing you ever did or said? You know what I mean? I am a work in progress, just like you. And I've made some mistakes that I regret. I, I've never meant any harm to anybody. All of my gestures of, of, you know, of hugging somebody for photos or kissing somebody on the forehead, you know, or the cheek is in my mind at the moment was a, a sign of appreciation and, and kindness and warmth. But it was wrong, it, it, it was really wrong of me to assume. So I am profoundly sorry to anyone out there that I offended. That was never my intention. Somebody sent me something I wanted to share with you that was really Though no one can go back and make a brand new start, anyone can start from now and make a brand new ending. Now, I hope that I can have the opportunity to make amends to people that I've offended somehow or hurt. Uh, that has never been my intention or desire, but I recognize that I need to be sensitive to all, there are a lot of different people in this room. Am I right? Lots of different people. All of you have your own histories, your own heartaches, your own failures and flaws, your, your own strengths and skills. And we're all different. And I, I made the mistake of kind of painting with a broad brush. Does that make sense? And I am profoundly sorry for that. And I would like to ask anyone out there that I may have offended to accept my sincere apology and know that I have learned from my reflection oh, during this time, I have learned that I need to alter the way I engage with people. And it's difficult sometimes, you guys, because when I, 
When a hundred people come up and ask for a hug, you start assuming that the hundred and first one wants one too. And it doesn't work that way. You know what I mean? But you get lazy. You just get used to it. That was my fault. I am certainly not, you know, not perfect by any means. I've been very blessed to have a career in this field and to do a lot of great shows. And I'm so blessed. I'm so grateful for that. But I'm just a dumb guy like you. Just trying my best, you know, and, and trying to try my best. And so I, I, I want to apologize. If there's anyone in here, I don't know. If there's anyone in here that, that ever had a, you know, a, an uncomfortable moment at my expense, I, I am so sorry. That it was never my intention. Do you, do you hear me? I mean, I want to make sure I'm here. Communicating to you clearly. Um, I wrote some things down because <laughs> I knew I wouldn't be able to think. I love you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Now I have to just say this because I, I don't want. I again, I don't want any of this to be negative. But any any kind any kind of a, any kind of claims of assault <laughs> or you know or I even want to use those words molestation you know or you know or abuse no and my heart hurts for for the people that actually have been and my heart hurts for anyone who feels that I am mortified to think that I would have made somebody feel that way and you know the in our, in our current setting, you have to be more careful, right? And I'm just a dumb old man. I've been doing this so long. And like I said, when you get, when you get affirmation from so many people, you start to believe it. <laughs> Does that make sense? When, when, when 500 people walk up and tell you how much they love you and appreciate your work, you start to believe that crap. And then you start to assume, well, she liked me and they all liked me, so she probably likes me too. No, maybe not, right? Or she's diff she, she deserves the respect of having her own, right? Of having her own space and her own opinions. And it, she may be different, and that's where I've really messed up. Sorry, sorry, sorry. All right, guys, let's give a hand to Vic. Vic no, is here talking. Vic is I also want to ask you really quickly. Any <laughs> a bright spot in the darkness. Thank you. Um, I also want to say, any of you that are fans that have been supportive, you have no idea how much I appreciate that, but I, I, don't want, I don't want you to be the subject of hatred and anger as well, just because you're trying to stick up for someone. I wouldn't want that for you. Um, so thank you for those of you that have been kind and, and supportive and, and um, it, may, it really breaks my heart when when I hear that somebody tried to, you know, speak words of positivity and say, "Hey, I, I've known this guy. I've seen this guy ten times, and you know, over the last years, and and, I, and he's always been nice and kind. And I watched him interact with five hundred people in an autograph line, and and I, I mean, it seemed fine. And then those people get attacked because they're trying to be supportive. I don't want that for you. I don't want that for anybody." And I, and I can't even speak to why some people would say the things they say. You guys probably have some ideas of your own about why some people say things online, you know, and, 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 and you know, put stories out there. All I know is that I am profoundly sorry 
profoundly sorry if any of my actions meant innocently offended anyone. And if you know anybody like the, that, you know, that is that one of those people, please extend my, my sincerest apologies. And I'm going to do better if I have the chance, if I'm able to continue, I, I, will, I intend to make amends. I intend to, to not give anybody any reason to ever feel uncomfortable around. That has never been my heart. Never. Thank you for listening. The Happy Warrior Podcast, hosted by Peter Von Pischke, produced by Robert Mayling, a production of the Sioux Empire Podcast Network. Learn more at happy-warrior.net. A production of the Sioux Empire.com.